Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at a rather small full-fledged Windows PC from Lenovo. This is their M90 Nano and it's essentially a laptop without the laptop and we're going to be taking a closer look at what you can do with this little Windows computer here in just a second. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure this came in on loan from Lenovo so when we're done with this it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this little computer is all about. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. The price on this one will vary based on your particular configuration. The one we're looking at today should run you just under $700. It's got an i5-8265U processor inside, 8 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Uh, you can probably get in the door though for about 400 bucks with the entry level version which is a Celeron 4205U processor with 4 gigs of RAM and you can go all the way up to an i7 so there's a lot of different ways you can configure this. Uh, they have a beefier looking one for IoT applications that's got this big metal heat sink on it that uh, is rated to some uh, mil-spec durability specifications as well. Uh, this one is more of the office machine, so we'll be uh, not putting it through any punishment in this review. Uh, it's not very upgradable from a RAM or processor standpoint, uh, but you can upgrade the storage. Uh, so you will need to choose the RAM and processor when you buy it, knowing that that's what you're going to be stuck with for life. Uh, but there are two M2 slots inside of it. We discovered that when we took it apart a little bit earlier here on the channel. Uh, so you can add a second M2 MVME or swap out the first one if you want. But again, you can't get at that uh, processor or RAM. Very small form factor, as you can see here. Uh, again, it's the guts of a laptop, so it will perform about where we've seen other laptops similarly configured perform. And you've got a lot of ports to choose from, including a number right here on the front. Uh, we've got a USB Type-C port along with two USB 3 ports here. Uh, these are all rated at the Gen 2 spec, so you can get uh, the theoretical 10 gigabits per second running out of each of those. And it was also nice to see that you've got an audio jack here front and center for a microphone and headphones. Around the back here, we've got a few more ports, including a power port for the power adapter. You've got a display port output here. You have a USB 3 port here and another one here. Both of these rated at uh, 10 gigabits per second. And you've got a full service USB-C port here under number five. And this one actually will work for power too. In fact, we plugged it into one of my displays over there that has a built-in USB-C dock. And we were able to get the whole computer up and running with a single cable, which was pretty cool. Uh, so you can uh, make use of that USB-C port for more than just data and video. Uh, the front port, by the way, just does data though. So keep that in mind. You've got gigabit ethernet here. You have a Kensington lock here for locking it down. It is very easy to walk away with, of course. And then you've got our antenna port there for connecting up your Wi-Fi antenna. It supports all of the latest wireless standards and we found the performance to be pretty decent, which you will see in a few minutes. Uh, now this is not fanless, of course, because it is very compact and you'll definitely want to keep all of these vents free so that you can keep the device cool. Uh, the rubber feet here will keep it elevated high enough for that purpose, but you just want to be careful not to block uh, the vents here on the other side. And we'll take a look at its thermal performance here a little bit later in the review. So let's plug it in now to my monitor and see how it performs. All right, so we have now the computer booted up and you'll note that we don't have an HDMI port on the back of it but they do give you an adapter in the box to get an HDMI port out of that USB-C port on the back. Remember, the front one here does not deliver video, only the rear one does. So you can choose to use that display port or uh, use the USB-C port or both to get a dual display going out. What's interesting though is the adapter they included in the box would not go up to 30 hertz at 4K. Uh, but a third-party adapter I have that's rated for 4K at that refresh rate did work. So the adapter here could have been better, uh, but if you are doing 1080p like we are now, it should be fine at higher refresh rates. I was very impressed with how snappy this thing is, and of course that's because it's a full-performance machine here in a mini PC shell. Uh, so doing things like web browsing and word processing and all the other stuff you would typically do on your computer will be very, very quick on this. I have it now connected to Wi-Fi. We have it on an AC wireless network. 
Uh, note that it doesn't support Wi-Fi 6, but it does, of course, support uh, the recent AC standard. And all in, it's a very nicely performing device for all of the basics that a computer like this might do, and perhaps a few other things as well. A little bit earlier, we took a look at my YouTube channel running at 60 frames per second at 1080p. That worked just fine as expected, no drop frames, everything was good on that front. And we also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test to see how this stacks up against other similarly equipped computers for web browsing. And on that test, we got a score of 171.7 on version 1.0 of that test, 101 on version 2.0. And for the most part, this is right within the margin of error of other machines we've looked at running with this same processor. Now, all the other computers we're looking at today on that chart are laptops. This, of course, is a desktop, but it's the same guts, so uh, we're getting the same performance, which, of course, is no surprise. So altogether, uh, not bad performance here, and, of course, you never run out of battery on it either. So let's move on now to gaming. We'll begin with Fortnite running at the absolute lowest 1080p settings. It doesn't look so great because, of course, it does render out at a lower resolution, but we were able to get a pretty steady 35 to 65 frames per second, depending on what was going on in the game. Uh, remember that these Intel chips are not very well suited for gaming, so you're not going to be able to run a lot of AAA titles, but you can squeeze a couple things together and maybe get a playable game of Fortnite going every once in a while. Uh, we also took a look at Rocket League. Uh, there at the lowest 1080p settings, we were going at about 45 to 65 frames per second. When we cranked the settings up to the highest settings, we were getting around 30 to 45 frames per second. Not bad, but again, you'll see better performance out of a computer designed for gaming with the proper graphics hardware installed. But as we've always seen on these Intel chips, older games run great. Uh, Half-Life 2 at 1080p was doing north of 100 frames per second. Uh, so a lot of the games from 10 or 15 years ago on the PC, including a lot of emulation, uh, should work fine on this little computer, and you should have a pretty good run at it. But again, don't buy it for gaming. This is really more of a work-oriented device. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 8,048. Uh, that puts it ahead of a few of the laptops we've looked at with this similar configuration, which is pretty good, uh, but it's not significantly better. It's just a little bit better. Uh, but overall, again, this is not going to be something I'm going to recommend on the gaming front. And on the 3 d Mark stress test, we got a score of 95.40%. Uh, this puts the computer under load and sees what kind of performance drop-offs you can expect. Now, 95% is not a bad score, but it's also not a passing score on that test. Uh, to pass it, you got to hit 97%, uh, but it's not bad for uh, this form factor. And of course, we've seen laptops perform worse than this one, but just keep that in mind. You will get some throttling as you're using it. Now, I also measured power consumption, and at idle, according to our kilowatt, uh, it's only consuming about 5 watts of power, even with the display output running. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, when you're putting it under load, you're going to see uh, power consumption go up to about 40 watts or so, and then it's going to drop down after about 30 seconds to about 25 watts, give or take, depending on what it is you're doing. Uh, that's the throttling in action. So you'll hear that fan spin up, and then it'll run pretty good for a little bit, and then it will drop down and begin running at a lower level of performance. Uh, they do that to prevent the chip from overheating. The good news is, is that you won't hear loud fan noise for sustained periods of time, because once it does throttle that CPU down, it runs the fan at a lower speed. Uh, so the fan noise, I would say, on this is pretty comparable to a laptop fan. It's the same fan, pretty much, that those laptops have. Uh, so it's certainly audible, and you will hear that fan kick on from time to time. And the unit itself does get a little bit warm, which is why you definitely want to keep all those vents clear to keep that fan working and cooling off the computer. There is only a single fan in here, and the components are pretty close together on it. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. If you want a more consistent performance, you'll probably need a larger desktop with a larger fan and heatsink to keep that computer running at a consistent speed. Now, we also tested its home theater capabilities. We started off by running that Jellyfish test file we like to run on all of these mini PCs. Uh, that, as expected, decoded properly. It's a 140 megabit per second HEVC 4K file at 10 bit. Uh, so that is pretty comparable to what you would get out of a Blu-ray 4K movie, so all good there. The problem, though, is that it did not support any of the lossless audio formats. 
So we were not able to get DTS HD or Dolby True HD out of this, even when I switched over to that other adapter that I talked about a little bit earlier. So it looks like from the home theater perspective, uh, this is not going to cut it, but it will decode the video just fine. And we also booted up Ubuntu to make sure that it was able to detect all of the hardware. So Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, audio, video, everything here seems to be working just fine from a compatibility standpoint. So uh, that is all good as well. So you could definitely get some alternative operating systems running here on the device. And this was consistent with other machines built around this same hardware. So overall, this is a very nicely performing general computing device. I like the performance I'm getting out of the form factor for sure. But one thing to keep in mind if you are in the market for a little PC like this one is that you could get the same performance out of a laptop and you might end up paying less and picking up a portable display in the process. Uh, don't forget this one needs a display paired with it to work and it doesn't come with a display. Uh, it does though come with a keyboard and mouse at least. Uh, so you will maybe spend more to get the same experience you'd have with a laptop on your desk. And of course, a laptop can also be connected to a larger display and it will perform the same as what you're seeing here. So just keep that in mind and add the laptop to your uh, list of comparisons as you're running around because again, the performance out of this thing will be the same given it's got laptop components inside. Uh, these things are really useful in corporate environments though because they are really nicely performing uh, they're not very heavy at all, and as a result, they're very easy to do large-scale deployments with. You're not going to have anyone breaking their backs, uh, lugging computers up and down flights of stairs because you just got these little tiny things here that you can pop on the back of a monitor. Unfortunately, they don't give you the visa mount to pop it on the back of the monitor in the box. That's an optional purchase with this, but overall, from a corporate perspective, I think this is a good device to consider. I just wish the RAM was upgradable, but the good news is you've got some upgradability on the storage. So that's going to do it for the Think Center M90. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.tv supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rajesh, Logic GR, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.